We are definitely going to draw one of my most favorite things to draw, and that is nature elements. I love nature. And so we're going to learn how to draw, you know, their shapes, their textures, and we're going to get some details. So let me show you guys, you know, ways I use shapes to kind of draw different nature elements. You know, and I love the word whenever there's an ish, so a triangle and an ish. So it's like kind of like a triangle. And so you can kind of see that some of these are definitely triangles, but some of them are triangle-ish. And you can see that these are different types of, you know, trees. These are mainly pine trees here. Uh, and then you also have circle trees. See, that's a circle. And then these get more circle-ish as we move to the right. And then we could also have like, you know, hedges and bushes be kind of square in shape. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people will cut the bushes and really make them boxy. But you can kind of see they get to be more and more squarish. We can use triangle and triangle triangle-ish shapes when it comes to different rocks and even crystals. Also circles, see? And the more and more, you know, rocks you get, that's a lot of circles. And we'll also be using square-ish shapes. So these are all shapes that we're going to practice today. You'll see it in like, you know, the water elements, see? Like the waves are, you know, triangle to triangle-ish. You'll see it here in the waterfall. And then for the bubbles, I'll use something like, you know, circle-ish shapes. And here too with the waves, you can kind of see how like the, the kind of blue is the triangle. And then over here in the red, these are kind of circle-ish shapes. And even in like the raindrops, I, like, I kind of like to see them as little like upside down ice cream cones. And sometimes you might even see like a like a weird shape, like an S shape or like a C shape. So that's something cool to look look forward to. You know, you might see it in like rivers and the way they kind of snake around like the mountains and rocks. So that's that's something we're gonna try to keep in mind for today as well. And then, you know, we have our clouds. Uh, and I pretty much, you know, mostly use circles for clouds. And then there's one last thing I wanna talk about and that's textures. So textures, okay, they are, the feeling, appearance, and consistency of a surface. So think of it like when you're touching something, what you feel with your fingers, those are gonna be textures. So here are some examples of textures I made up. Uh, these textures will work for many nature elements and really the fun part is making up your own texture. See, you know, you could just kind of invent different squiggles. See, these are kind of like M's. These are like M's with sharper edges. And you could even go larger with some of these squiggles. So depending on how la large you go, you'll make different textures and look like different things. I kind of want to just map out where we're going to put the grass real quick. So I'm just going to do a very, very light, you know, kind of oval, kind of like a squashed oval, oval. All right, so we kind of make like a light oval-ish. There's a, there goes an ish again. And then once you're done with that, go ahead and start to kind of make, you know, little kind of spiky triangles. And you can kind of just fill this shape up. Like you can see I'm kind of moving slow right now, but eventually I'm gonna have to just kind of go a little faster just because there's just so much here to fill up. And you can kind of leave clumps where there's no texture. Just kind of let it, you know, breathe in that area when you kind of just don't put anything. But I do like to cover a good amount of it with texture. See, and look at this. These are just squiggly like lines that go up and down. So, you know, they're not difficult to do. All right, I think that's pretty good. So I think we need to throw some bigger and larger elements here. And so you can see here that basically these are really tall, you know, triangle shapes. And they're a bit kind of fat and thick. See that? And then there's in between them. I don't know if you guys can see it up close. So the texture of this, you see that it's like little lines. So after you do these shapes, you could do these like uh, kind of long but thin lines. Look at that. And it's going to look more like that. It's up to you where you want to put it. it. You don't even have to put it exactly where I'm putting it. But I'm going to go ahead and put one right here. See, here's one of the triangle shapes. Here's another one. Here's another one. See, and they just kind of build and layer on top of each other. Like that, another one, another one, another one. And then I'm going to go ahead and just throw the lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. These lines, look at my lines. Some of them are crooked. 
And that, that actually makes it look better sometimes if it's crooked because nature is not always perfect. Nature doesn't really have too many straight lines. So see so that, so look how quickly that was done. It doesn't need, you know, it doesn't need to take too long. And so I think we even have enough time to put a few more of these, not just one. So maybe, you know, let's go ahead and put another one right here. All right, and maybe because I love it so much, I'm gonna do one more and it's gonna be slightly behind this like leaf right there. See that? How it's like slightly behind it. That's part of the overlapping. Um, and that's really good. That's gonna help to show depth. Done. Okay, let's move on. So you can see here that basically it's just a line. And then you can see here how this is kind of like a triangle filled with little like teardrops. See that little teardrops? So that's the texture. So you could basically, you know, draw your triangle shape like that. And then you could layer little um, teardrops in there. See that? To create that texture. And once again, I would imagine it, you know, if I were to touch it, I could feel those soft, you know, textury flowers. You know, there would definitely be a soft texture. So I'd have to be careful when I touch it. That way I don't crush it. But see, that's how you do the lavender, right? And you can see also their little kind of teardrop shapes for leaves. And so I can also do little teardrop shapes for leaves. All right, so I'm looking forward to adding that. So I don't know, I'm just gonna put one just kind of coming out of the ground there. There's my line. Uh, and then here's my little triangle shape. And then I'm gonna go ahead and layer in. And there you go, I'm done with one. We definitely need more than one, right? We need to have more more than one lavender. So here's another stem, which is a line. And I'm gonna go ahead and do like a light little triangle. And then once again, little teardrops. Now I'm gonna do uh, maybe another one over here. I'll put this, let's, let's do the stem in front of the leaves this time. So this one, see that? How it's in front of the leaf there? So that's cool. And I'm just gonna start with the teardrop shapes first this time, just to kind of mix it up. So if you really think about what detail is, and this is like a secret a lot of people don't know, is basically filling up a big shape with small shapes, right? Look, as if you like, if you look at this, that's a big triangle shape and it has no detail. And then as soon as I go, oh, let's just put little texture teardrop shapes inside that big shape, then now we have detail. There you go, so we have five total. I think that's definitely a good amount of uh, lavenders. All right, well, what do we have here? <laughs> All right, so uh, I think I'm gonna make this a decent size, so. I'm gonna say it's behind it, you know, I'm gonna kind of just do this triangle shape behind it, see that? Um, but you don't see all the triangle, right? You only see a little bit of it like right here because it's behind it. So maybe you see parts of it there and there. Once I have that triangle uh, shape in there, I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of value so it pops. You can see here that I'm just kind of using the side of my pencil or my tool just to create these kind of value marks. You could use the side of your pencil to kind of lay down value. And I'm just kind of putting like, um, kind of like a light-ish to medium value. It's up to you, you don't have to do, you could do whatever value you want, you know? So if you feel like you want a, a darker medium value, then you can do that. Or a little bit of a lighter, you can do that one too. Well, let's just kind of go back to it real quick. Okay, you can see that inside here, you know, there's a lot of just kind of small squares here. Here's another small triangle in there. And he, over here, you know, you can kind of see these as kind of square shapes too, but kind of longer re rectangles. And so pretty much whatever you want, you could fill it in with whatever shape you want to get the texture. Because rocks can be, once again, so many different shapes, right? So I'm gonna say that there's a circle shape inside there. And once again, as soon as we do this, we're adding detail. And then maybe uh, a triangle-ish shape, look at that. And then maybe, you know, some square-ish shapes, all right? And so we, we do need the top still. I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the square base on the other side over here, that behind the lavenders. 
And see, I'm just kind of drawing it super light. Yeah, just kind of keep it super light. And you could always go darker later on. And then same thing I did for the triangle-ish rock. I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in with probably the same kind of value that I did for that. See? And it doesn't take too long to fill up this shape. And you'll get better and faster at this, so trust me. And we need detail! So, you know, we could just kind of make up square and triangle shapes everywhere. So here's a square. And our circle shapes too, circle. And then maybe some triangles up here. Okay, and then lastly, we need our oval shape up top, right? For our big rock. And so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna lay it over here. And I'm gonna have it go over here. So look, this takes up a good amount of space. Let's see, so I'm just kind of going back to filling that shape up with my, you know, light-ish value. And I guess in some areas it's starting to get dark, so. Some people like the texture and detail part, you know? Some people have more fun with just drawing the big shape and doing that part of it. And, uh, you know, I like doing it all, to be honest. And then what you could do here, check this out. You could always fill in some of those smaller shapes with a little bit of a darker value, see that? So let's just say this is a small shape. Well, I guess it is, I don't, a small shape compared to everything. And I'm just filling that up with a little bit of a darker value. And so that's gonna feel like a deep portion of the rock. So if you were to put your fingers in there, it might be like a little hole. All right, I think we would need to put more rocks though. And so you can see that these ones are more kind of boxy. See that? They're kind of boxy. And then there's little squares inside too as well. See, that one makes up like kind of two squares. This one also makes up like two squares. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say there's a boxy rock that lives right there. So it's gonna be a square-ish, okay? I'm not gonna make it a perfect box, but it's gonna be a square-ish. So as you can see, I'm kind of getting the orders mixed up from earlier. And as you can see, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know, you can do whatever order you want first, you know. You can, once you draw the shape in, you can fill it up with value, right? That's one way to do it, that's one order. Or you could do texture right away, that's another order. So, you know, there's really no right or wrong in terms of the order here. Uh, I'm gonna put one all the way over here, like, super duper far in the left like that and let's just kind of go ahead and fill that in with a little bit of this medium value all right and i'm going to put one in the front here in front of the grass check this out so it's going to do like that and i'm going to go ahead and fill that in with value Maybe a little bit of a darker value to hide the grass behind it. It doesn't have to be too dark, uh, but it would be fine if it was, you know, dark because it's in the foreground. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. Let's do some trees. Okay, so let's zoom in a little closer and do some investigation. Okay, so the way that we do this is we're going to have a line, and it could be a thick line if you want, so that's a thin line, and you could have it kind of get thick at the bottom, see that? Like that, it could be something like that. And then over here, you kind of have like, see like how that's like a circle is shape right there? So I want you to kind of imagine it as a circle, but draw that circle super light, because all, we're not gonna be able to see all parts of it. This is just kind of like the pattern of the, the fanning of the leaves. And then once you have that, you can have basically have these triangle spikes. So that one, two, three, four, five, 
picks, you know, seven. You can keep on going because look at that, there's a lot. And then once you have that, this is what I want you guys to do. Is take your eraser, just erase, you know, the parts of the circle that don't make sense, right? We were just basically using it to get the general fanning of the leaves. See that? And that's gonna create that beautiful, you know, tropical plant. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put one right here. Here's the stem and I'm put it behind the rock. So you only see the top part of the stem because the rest of it is behind the rock. And I'm gonna draw this kind of shape in like that. And then just start to kind of do the fanning leaves. Let's do the other one differently. Instead of starting with the stem, let's start out with the circle first so over here. And I'm gonna imagine this circle kind of being behind the borders of my page. And I'm gonna do that, then I'm gonna do the stem. And uh, we'll definitely do a few more. And then we need the stems, right? Because if we don't, it's floating leaves. It could be floating, right? If there is like a wind, you know, strong gust of wind, uh, you know, it can definitely be floating leaves, but not in our picture. I'm not trying to do that today. Okay, I like that a lot. That's super cool. This is like turning into something that I didn't expect it would turn out, and I love it. All right, so in this one, you know, I'm just gonna gonna choose this just to kind of speed it up. Um, and basically, we're gonna do um, like a little river that kind of snakes, and uh, you know. Once again, you know, you can kind of, if you zoom in, you'll see that there's a bunch of rocks. You'll definitely see reflection, right? So you can see this, these trees right here, and you can see the reflection on the bottom, so we'll definitely do that. And you can see here, see this tree right here? You can see the reflection of the tree. So it's basically, think of it like a mirror, and you're gonna see it, see this part of it goes that way, and then this part goes that way. Just like over here, these, these trees, these are the real trees, they go up, but then the mirror image of the trees go down, see? And they're basically the exact same shapes, but they're just a little bit blurrier. See how like on this one, you can see the detail, you can see the texture, but on the water part, you just mainly see the shapes, but you don't really see much of the detail because you mainly see the detail of the rocks and the, you know, the ripples and things like that. See, here's the ripples, see that? I'm gonna see these ripples. And so we're gonna do these type of C-shaped curves to represent ripples. And we're gonna put the shadow shapes of the reflections. So over here, I'm just gonna put these C shapes, look at that, around the rocks. See how they just kinda like, hey, let's go around, let's go around, let's go around. Maybe here there's just kinda like a long, look at that long just line that just acts like a snake. Look at that, just kinda snakes. Can kind of think of that snake hissing sound. That might actually almost sound like water too. See so here, more ripples, but these ripples go like left to right. See that? They can have S curves, they can have C curves, they could be long curves, there could be tiny curves. See, and your job is to just mix it up with a variety of these different things that we talked about. See? And the reflections are gonna be super easy. Check this out. So I'm just gonna use a, you know, the side of my tool and I don't even need to do a line, okay? It's just gonna be a soft blurry shape. I'm gonna do the reflection for this rock. Check this out. See, and I like doing the, um, the reflections soft. You know, our rocks here have hard edges, see that? But then our, our reflections, you know, kind of soft and they're kind of supposed to be blurry. And so maybe there's a little bit of reflection off from the grass, you know, so I'm gonna make this part a little bit darker. And here we have our reflections here for the rocks. And there you go. All right, and I think we need like um, a sky, right? So let's go to our clouds. All right, so you can kind of see that this is definitely a circle-ish shape. See that, look at this, see? Here's one. And you can see it's a combination of circle-ish shapes. Notice how some of them are kind of large, some of them are medium, and some of them are small. 
And then inside that shape, you also kind of get these like circle textures too, see? Circle textures, some of the textures are big, some of them are small, see? And so that's basically how we're gonna draw the clouds. Um, and I, you know, I think lastly, this just needs like background mountains, you know, here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. And I'm gonna use um, a, a kind of like oval-ish to square -ish shape, see that? And then I'm gonna just kind of make it a little bit darker. See, I'm gonna need to make this darker now because it's in the middle ground and I need it to pop and separate from the background. And I think we're done. Now, if you like that video, make sure you hit the like button to help us grow the YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button to make sure that you get notified for future videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.